Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about how to best go about painting your 3D printed parts if you absolutely have to do that. So here's what you want to know about that. Uh, and I say it like that because really uh, just from the very start, uh, I, I got to go on record saying this, painting a plastic part like this, a shiny, semi-shiny, slick, slippery, not very sticky surface like this uh, is a little bit tricky in, in any circumstance. Um, and in the world of painting, uh, you've come to the right place because it just so happens that before I got into uh, building the, uh, the grow domes and the aero grow system, uh, I did a lot of other things and a lot of those things did include painting. I did actually work as a house painter for a while. Uh, briefly. Uh, so that was working with a lot of different materials and a lot of different uh, types of paint and different circumstances, indoor, outdoor, and so forth. So I learned a lot about that. And I spent uh, several years working as an outdoor uh, large-scale muralist. So I was working on big murals that were, you know, uh, 10 feet, 15 feet high, 40, 50 feet wide sometimes. Uh, sometimes bigger. But here you have, again, an outdoor situation, a lot of different types of substrate. Uh, and a lot of situations where your, your paint is just going to undergo brutal attack by the elements, by people, by wear and abrasion, uh, chemicals, road chemicals and salts, uh, all sorts of things can happen to paint. So I, I, I know a thing or two about paint. So uh, when one of the uh, handful of subscribers to the channel asked me, uh, Devin, this video is for you, by the way, buddy, uh, asked me about how to paint these parts. Uh, I said that I would do a video on that. So here's what I'm going to say. If you can avoid painting the part, in particular with a 3D printed part, avoid painting the part. So that means uh, if you can get the, 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 the part done in a color, uh, PLA, PETG, whatever it is you're printing in, in the color that you want as the final result, just go for it. Print it in that color, right? If you absolutely must paint your part, I'm going to tell you the best advice I can give you. Uh, and it's not going to guarantee any results. You're on your own here. It's the Wild West when it comes to putting paint on a shiny plastic part. But here's what you want to pay attention to. Painting something well so that the paint sticks properly and holds up the way it's supposed to and does the job as it should really comes down to getting it to stick to the plastic properly, or the substrate, in this case plastic, getting it to stick to it properly the very first time. Now, in the case of plastic, you're already starting with a slick surface. We talked about that. Uh, you want to prep any surface that you're going to be painting, whether it's this or anything else, by getting rid of any oils and greases. In this case, you could run it under the water and some dish soap or something like that would get all the greases off. Uh, dry it down. And then take uh, some sandpaper. This is, this is what I would recommend. Uh, it doesn't have to be the round kind, it could be any kind. Just uh, make sure it's about 220 grit, 220 grit. You'll see the number printed on the back here. Uh, that's what I would start with. If you wanted to go even a little rougher, you could maybe use 180 grit. But 220 will give the surface of the plastic enough what's called tooth, right? Uh, like tooth bite. Uh, so that uh, when you start applying a coating, it's going to actually have something to grip onto other than something slick and shiny and plasticky, right? So now, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but even those few, just few passes I just took actually already started to dull the surface. And that's, you can try going against the, against the grain, in this case, against the layers or with the layers. Uh, try a couple different things. It depends how smooth you want to get it. Really. Uh, really comes down to just getting it dull like that though. That's the effect that you want. You want it to be not shiny if at all possible. So, and that includes, you know, the sides here. You want to go with the sandpaper on the sides. Make sure you get it all the way into the little grooves, work into the little corners. But anywhere you see it shining, and on the sides like here, right? And then if you have like holes or anything like that, you're going to want to like crinkle up the paper, work it into a shape, just kind of work it in there, get it nice and rough. Just basically anywhere that you can see and, and take your time and make sure that you're nailing all those places, get it nice and smooth. Well, aside from the fact that you're prepping it for paint, what you're also really doing, if you think about it, is you're making the part a lot nicer. You're getting rid of any, any fuzz, any, any stringing, uh, any little 
boogers you might have on here that you don't like, you can sand those out, now's your time, and make it really, really nice and perfect and flat, and then you're ready for the next step, okay? So you're gonna wanna, once that's all sanded, take it back to the sink, wash it again with some dish soap, just a little bit, you don't need a whole lot, don't go crazy, just a couple of drops under some warm uh, water, get it all, rinse it really well, that's important, do rinse it really well. And, uh, and then dry it off really well, let it air dry as well, in addition to drying it with a towel, you want it absolutely bone dry before you do the next step. So let it sit overnight if you have to, seriously, let it dry completely. So then, with plastic, you've got a couple things you can do, but I'm gonna give you your options and I'm gonna tell you what I recommend. You can go right to a, whoops, I meant to cover these labels completely. I'm not showing labels on this channel until I have a reason to do so. So these products are not uh, specific to any one, pro, uh, any one manufacturer. Several manufacturers make these types of products, but something that's come out relatively recently is this, um, I'm gonna cover it, but it's a, it's a paint and primer combination. Um, that has uh, the primer built into the paint so you don't have to prime the part first and then wait for that to dry and then paint it or wait for it to flash and paint it. You don't have to do any of that anymore with this new paint. You can go for a two-in-one, uh, two-step and one-step uh, application and they even call it 2X that'll just spray and go. Now the one thing I will say about this is because they're combining both products into one, neither of them is going to perform as well as those products would perform individually if applied separately. So what that would mean, and this is the part where I'm going to advise this is how you actually do it, don't do it this way. Use this paint as paint if you want to, even if it has the primer built into it, that's fine. But instead of just relying on the primer that's built into this product, as a paint product, as a finished product, go ahead and get yourself some, I don't have a can of it here, but a can of primer, just straight primer. It's usually, you can get it in different colors, but light gray, dark gray, black, white, something closest to, whatever's closest to the color of your final piece. So if your piece is really, really dark, your final piece is gonna be black, get a black primer. If your part is gonna be like a light green, like this, as a paint, then go for like a light gray primer. Uh, and that'll, uh, that'll, you know, then you won't have to cover so much to, uh, to, to cover that primer. But sand it down, wash it, let it dry, hit it with the primer. Now, when you, it's really, really most important layer is your very first, just like with 3D printing, right? They say the first layer is the most important one. The same thing is true for paint. Your first layer is the most important. So once it's ready for that first layer of primer, you want to set it out like you would anything else you're spray painting, but seriously, go really, really light on your first coat. You really don't even want to cover it. You, you want to be able to see through everywhere through your first coat to the part, okay? You want it to be very, very light. Let that tack up. I would say with most products out of a can like this, um, you know, having it flash uh, is going to take maybe 10 minutes or so, right? Uh, in the open air on a relatively warm day. Maybe let it sit for 10 minutes. Hit it again, slightly heavier. Not, you still want to be able to see the part through it. You want your primer to take three times, three coats, three separate coats. It's just my opinion, this is to get it to stick, right? It should take three coats to get that primer to the point where you cannot see the original color of the part behind the primer, right? So spray it once, still see the part behind it. Spray it twice, still kind of see the part behind it. Spray it on a third time, Part's gone, it's just primer. That's how you know you've done it right on a part like this, right? Once, and then you might have to flip it, do the same thing on the other side, depends on your part. Once that's done, and you can see that primer is covering the entire part, and it's dry according to the instructions on the can, um, you are ready to proceed with the paint. It's essentially the same deal. You're just gonna go in a very light coat, and then a little, and let that flash, and then hit it with another coat, let that flash, and then hit it with your final coat, a little bit heavier if you want it to be shiny for your third and final coat, and then let that dry and you should be fine. So the secret is always surface preparation to any painting. Prep your surface, clean it, dry it, scuff it, clean it again, prime it lightly, prime it again lightly, prime it again lightly, paint lightly, paint lightly, paint a little bit heavier, done. So that's how you would paint a part like that. It sounds like a lot of work. It's not all that bad. Once you get a rhythm going, it'll be fine. 
Um, and if you have multiple parts, now's your chance to, to print all of the, uh, print them, <laughs> print them all at one time, but also paint them all at one time if you want to just line them up and, and put them through the whole same process. Uh, that's the way to do it. You can also mask these parts uh, as you're painting them if you want to mask off an area uh, like you would a car or a helmet or uh, that's the other thing I used to do. I used to do a lot of airbrush painting. So I've worked on a lot of helmets and cars and RVs and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm good old friends with blue tape. Blue tape works great for that. Uh, it'll come off easily on your part. It's not going to stick too much to it. It's not going to pull off your, your paint layers or anything. It comes off nice and clean, super easy cheesy and uh, good to go. What else can I recommend here? Uh, you can also, uh, after you're done with your final coat of paint and that's all dried up, you can put a final coat of uh, clear coat or uh, polyurethane protective uh, clear coat, UV clear coat, something like that. The thing I will say about that is that if your part is going to be outside in the sunlight or in the rain, mostly sunlight is what we're worried about, uh, it's going to be taking a lot of UV, and UV damages every paint I've ever seen. I've never seen any paint that can hold up to UV for more than a few years. Uh, red, the color red in a paint will break down the quickest in the sun. Uh, I've had murals where, uh, you know, I paint the mural, everything looks beautiful for a couple of years, and then at about year four or year five, whatever it turns out to be, depending on the amount of sun, Everywhere there was red in the mural, it's gone. All the other colors are fine. Red is like someone came in with an eraser and just removed red from the entire mural. It's amazing. So the sun will break down paint colors. The best thing you can do is to use a UV protectant uh, on any part that's going to be outside. UV protectants are, eh, it depends. I mean, some of them are pretty good. Some of them are pretty terrible. You know, venture out into that land at your own risk. It's the Wild West, but I will say that stick with the, the main brands. Uh, you should be a little better. Um, big box store types of paint depends. I mean, I've had uh, some success with some brands, not so much success with other brands. Also, it depends on what you're painting and where it's going to be used, right? So, all of these things uh, you'll probably want to pay attention to when you're talking about painting your, uh, your 3D parts. So, Yes, they can be painted. No, I don't recommend it. But if you do it, that's how you want to do it. Uh, please do remember to, if you had any kind of value from this video, remember to like and subscribe to the video. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you want to see another video about, if it's painting or anything else. Let me know. Catch you next time. Thanks.